Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 22nd lecture of the course on sociological perspectives on modernity. What we have been discussing in, in this module of module on the feminist challenge to critical modernist paradigm in sociology, okay. we have discussed the feminist perspectives on the central pillars of critical modernism through the lenses of social movements, reflexivity and rationality. Okay? And in this lecture, we are going to discuss the feminist challenge to critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the lens of holism or totality. Okay? And as you know, we have already discussed the analogy between Marxism and feminism. Okay? The way feminism also has become a part of identity politics movements. Okay? which sharply contrasts with Marxist emphasis on the analysis of present contemporary movements. Okay. We have also discussed lived experiences okay. and feminist, feminist refusal of the cognitive splits between uh, analytic and normative, emotional and rational and so on. Okay. And we have discussed uh, how knowledge or science is relative, is not universal had knowledge been universal, okay? had knowledge been articulated in, in absolute terms, okay? had knowledge been deduced from general principles only, okay? then, any, uh, then anyone could have spoken for anyone else, but it does not work in practice. Okay? I think we stopped here in the last lecture and, and in this lecture, we are going to discuss the feminist perspectives on critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the lens of holism or totality. To begin with, I mean we, we know the, 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 uh, the debate between uh, Marxism and feminism. I mean as we have, we have already discussed how uh, you will find how, how Marxist analysis of social change. Okay. is based on the analysis of present movements. Marxism does not dwell upon identity politics movements, rather Marxism goes beyond that, okay. whereas feminism uh, is, is uh, more interested, uh, interested in, in the identity politics movements. Okay. There is a greater focus on enemy agency, namely backlash effects, um, uh, ideology, patriarchy and so on. Okay. And, and the way feminism emphasized more on ideology, more on structure, but not agency, Marxism emphasizes more on agency okay, as compared to structure or ideology. Okay. Suppose we have already discussed so, uh, what are ideologies for Marx? Ideologies are myths, ideologies are fantasies, ideologies are inverted images, ideologies are echoes of material life. In quest of truth, in <coughs> In, in quest of knowledge, okay, one must go beyond one's own ideologies. Okay. That is what Marx, but feminism concentrates more on ideology, more on structure as compared to agency. For Marxism, agency assumes greater significance as compared to the structure or ideology. Okay. There are a variety of, uh, you, will, you will find a variety of feminist strands or perspectives may be liberal feminism, may be Marxist feminism, may be black feminism and so on, environmental feminism and so on. I am not going to discuss the variety of feminism. I mean how feminists challenge or try to deconstruct modernity, that is our purpose. For example, you will find liberal feminism is not discussed here as clearly 
affirmative modernist in approach. Okay. Liberal feminism also suggests that modernization must be viewed as progress. When, when, when somebody says that modernization must be viewed as a part of progress, okay, then there, there, there lies the absence of reflexivity, there lies the absence of any critical analysis, I mean uncritical reliance on, on state agency and so on. Okay. Why modernization is viewed as progress for liberal feminists, not for others, other, other feminists? Because what is modernization per se? Modernization theory postulates that developing or underdeveloped countries will make progress if they follow the development pattern of the developed ones. Then if I have to make development possible, then, then if India has to make development possible, India has to copy, follow the pattern of development of the United States of America, United Kingdom and so on. Okay. That is uncritical, that is unreflexive. But liberal feminism suggests that no modernization also should be viewed as a part of progress. Okay. There lies the absence of reflexivity and so on, uncritical reliance on state agency and so on. In this context, that is why I am not going to, I am not discussing liberal feminism per se. What we are going to discuss? We are going to discuss different, I mean, the, I mean, feminist strands as a whole, so far as critical modernist paradigm in sociology is concerned. Okay. For example, idea of pat patriarchy in radical feminism, in Marxist feminism or socialist feminism, okay. the way radical Marxism or uh, socialist Marxism or Marxist, uh, sorry, radical feminism or, or, or socialist feminism or uh, Marxist feminism would view patriarchy. For them, patriarchy also is a byproduct of the existing mode of production. I mean, they try to link it to capitalism. Okay. Patriarchy as a, as a systematic domination and exploitation of women by men. Okay. Then, patriarchy, which is seen as a systematic domination, subordination, uh, subjugation and exploitation of women by men, okay, then, then there must be the, the limits of patriarchy concept when we used to exclude critical modernist discourse as in radical feminism. Okay. Then patriarchy is nothing but a byproduct of the existing mode of production. Okay. That is how radical feminists, uh, socialist feminists and Marxist feminists argue. Okay. In this case that, that if, the, if patriarchy would be reduced to the, the hitherto existing modes of production, there are certain problems. There, there is, then there is a difficulty in thinking about the nature of paid work rather than distribution of positions within it. There is, a diff, there is an obvious difficulty in, in thinking about the nature of paid work. See, a wage alone may not be able to define the relations of production. The relations of production will be, will be defined by the ways in which different positions are distributed within particular work or occupation or factory and so. There is also a difficulty in explaining conflicts within patriarchal state or politics. Okay. That is why I said when you tend to reduce patriarchy as, as a part of, I mean uh, when, when patriarchy is reduced to the hitherto existing modes of production, okay, there is obviously a difficulty in explaining conflicts, maybe conflicts uh, in terms of gender okay, within patriarchal uh, state, within patriarchal politics. There is also difficulty in explaining change within unchanged patriarchy. How can I, I, I explain social change that I will say that no, we have made tremendous changes in our economy, in our culture, in our polity and so on. But how can I make such claim in an unchanged patriarchal social order? Okay? That is why there is also difficulty in agreeing on the nature of the problem. What is the nature of such problem? What is the nature of such problem of inequality, poverty, unemployment, squalor, diseases, gender inequality, caste inu inequality, race inequality and so on? Is it simply biological? Is it simply psychological? Is it social? It is cultural? Is it what? Is it political? Is it economic? What? 
okay that's why patriarchy that, that that's why patriarchy cannot be reduced to i mean patriarchy cannot always be reduced to the hitherto existing modes of production okay and and we must try to make certain attempts to integrate certain things okay suppose wolby's dual systems theory okay that interaction interaction may happen i mean interaction between movement intellectuals as well as academic intellectual patriarchy i mean interaction when i say pa uh, interaction i'll say that uh, no there is pat patriarchy in the private sphere but not in the public sphere okay or only public sphere but not private sphere okay but that's why wolby in a very skillful manner she mentioned the dual systems theory which aims at interaction or interarticulation of capitalism and patriarchy okay if if capitalism and patriarchy can be uh, ca ca can be articulated in a much sharper manner okay then you will find that the the the, the shift from private patriarchy to public patriarchy that that patriarchy has not only to be condemned in private sphere but also in public sphere how patriarchy is operational not only in private sphere but also in public sphere and it is the job of the right thinking worlders the 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 critical minds to interrogate patriarchy in both private as well as public spheres okay now when wolby pointed out that there must be interaction or interarticulation of capitalism in patriarchy okay and then capitalism typically seen as patriarchal but but as changing the nature of patriarchal mechanisms of domination subordination subjugation and exploitation it is very fruitful as an empirical hypothesis okay there is obviously certain certain issues of periodization okay patriarchy is seen as antecedent to and more general than capitalism yet capitalism clearly modifies uh, patriarchy i mean changing div gender divisions of labor private public issues uh, i mean the differences between pub private issues public and public issues and how should we integrate them and family changes changes in the structure of family and so on okay i would suggest that this is a false problem okay i mean I, I i don't suggest i mean feminist suggest that this is a false problem okay patriarchy is at higher level than capitalism and corresponds in fact to class society in the works of marx both capitalism as well as patriarchy they dominate the known history the known i mean the the known written history patriarchy as well as capitalism can be seen as continuously interrelated when we when we look at Raymond Williams work through I mean in, in the section on cultural studies response to critical modernist paradigm in sociology okay uh, in the works of Raymond Williams we will see that how both patriarchy as well as capitalism okay can be seen as continuously interrelated okay and capitalism as well as patriarchy can be thought of in loose terms as domination and exploitation without turning what are historically specific modes of gender and class formation into an eternal structure okay this is very important okay i mean we can then look at at least two th elements one capitalist patriarchy and secondly interaction of shifts within capitalism and patriarchy interaction of shifts within capitalism and patriarchy i mean the debate between private sphere and public sphere that's why feminists argue that my personal is also political right my personal is not simply personal the the way i undergo dom domestic violence the way I, I, I have been subordinated by this by this patriarchal social order okay these these are all political dimensions of our economic culture and politics okay then we i mean we then look at one capitalist patriarchy and secondly the interaction of shifts within capitalism and patriarchy okay there is also a need to consider the idea that changes in patriarchal 
modes of domination, subordination, subjugation and exploitation lead to shifts in capitalism as well. I mean it points to uh, the need for more dynamic and agency oriented theories of patriarchy. This, this area, this such such interrogation, such engagement generates fruitful empirical hypothesis for historical and sociological analysis of institutions. Okay. Maybe you can you can refer to the works of Abbott, Wallace, Walby, and so on, which runs risk of too much contingency, description, and inability to grasp contemporary capitalist patriarchy as coherent structure or as agency system, as we have already discussed in the works of Alan Turin. Okay, in the Western Marxist perspectives on critical modernist paradigm in sociology, Walby, for example, especially often reads like collection of descriptions of the 1990s Britain. What is often missing is a theoretical account of what generates and renews patri patriarchal relations in their most general sense. Okay. After periodization issue, we are going to discuss now unified systems accounts okay. and then we will we'll end this lecture. Okay. There, is a, there is a general agreement by now as of now of the inadequacy of Marxist feminism, okay, that patriarchy as a subset of capital. We just cannot say that patriarchy is, is, is a byproduct of capitalism. Patriarchy is also there in slavery, feudalism and so on. Okay. Or patriarchy cannot be reduced to only the way mode of production is designed. Okay. It, uh, feminists argue that, uh, not Marxist feminists, this is the, the Marxist feminists argue that no, patriarchy is a subset of capital. But broadly feminists do not argue this way. Feminists suggest that no patriarchy uh, is at a much higher level as compared to capitalism. Okay. Especially historical difficulties of, of patriarchy which come first and there is a limited, there are a limited range of issues for which this helps. Okay. Most important idea that, that uh, domestic labor as reproduction of real life in the works of Engels and hence thinkable as constituent element of capital. Okay. That is why in capital volume 3, Marx posed this question that, um, that the domestic work, housework which is carried out by housewives, they also generate some amount of income, right? huge amount of income, but they are not paid. Their unpaid income, why it is not yet included? in the national income accounting. Okay. This is very important. Okay. When Engels further said that, that domestic labor as reproduction of real life and hence thinkable as constituent element of capitalism, okay, uh, there are certain issues, there are certain difficulties. Okay. It does not account for other patriarchy. There is, a, there is a difference between needs of capital for reproduction of labor power. Okay and the needs of individual capitalists for cheap female labor. There is a difference. Okay. Empirical value, especially uh, in pointing to the impact of in influence of housework, child care, emotional support and especially child bearing and child care nexus, simultaneously a possible answer to why women. I mean, I mean this, this, this this empirical value especially in pointing to the influence of house, housework, uh, child care, emotional support and especially child bearing, child care nexus question implying transferal of natural child bearing to natural child care functions and something with a directly demonstrable influence of, of women's life chances uh, in contemporary society. Okay. This is very important that why women question, okay. a possible, uh, uh, a probable answer to that question that why women only, okay. that no, they have, they are naturally, it, they are designed in such a manner to, to reproduce children, okay. but this, this reproductive capacity of women may, may be natural, yes, obviously it is natural. But these child care functions, okay, they are not naturally given to women. They are given to women, no, these, these child care functions, 
are given to women by our economic culture and polity by this male dominated society. Okay? This is important. Please note here, however, collusion of male workers in imposing private patriarchy even against capitalist interests, family wage, threat to working class wages and organization levels. It suggests contradiction between women workers interests on the one hand and male workers interests on the other which has got significant implications for women's workers movements as well as main, main workers male workers movements. Okay? This is very important. Then, then, then such such then it requires certain unified socialist feminist theories as against Marxist feminism. Such unified socialist feminist theories do not subordinate patriarchy to capitalism, but try they attempt to reconceptualize both capitalism as well as patriarchy. The early uh, version that Firestone, okay, I mean Firestone, I mean normally presented as radical feminist, but but here is seen as expanding the idea of production and reproduction of real life, which which Engels wrote. Firestone draws on Engels the origin of private property, uh, the origin of family private property and the state generally reckoned to be failure because of her biographical, uh, because of her biological determinism, but brave and pioneering attempt at reconceptualize, uh, at, at reconceptualizing everything, I mean both patriarchy and capitalism and, and furthermore, and furthermore attempt to expand the idea of production and reproduction of real life. Okay? Later, Young and Jagar reflected on, on the expansions of division of labor okay, and alienation, human alienation, alienation from work and alienation from labor, alienation from my own self, human alienation. Okay, okay. Tong also has, has discussed this, okay. especially alienation broadens the idea of, of domination, subjugation, subordination, exploitation and so on and, and alienation again resolves sociological issues around agencies, the, the agent, uh, around the, the distinction between agency and structure, the uh, which should be placed on a higher pedestal vis a vis the other, I mean whether structure is more important than agency or agency is more important than structure and so on in a, in a very helpful way. Alienation avoids reification of limited aspects and movements of capitalism as constitutive of all class society. Okay? What is the, the aim of unified uh, systems accounts or unified systems theories or what, what, what do they claim? Okay? They claim to the or the aim of unified systems theories okay, is to integrate analysis of production and reproduction of a real life, subordination, subjugation and exploitation, typically also integration of analysis of meaning and psychoanalysis, literary theory, politics and so on. And then, then the, the key question here is, is it tenable, is it sustainable and so on. And finally, finally, some of the difficulties of agreement in 1970s feminism and some of the promises of unified socialist feminists that which relates to academic specialization or reification, I mean political economy, biological determinism, literary criticism, psychoanalysis and so on. Such specialization of these fields and generation of narrow concepts that tend to lose hold on the totality of lived experiences. Okay? Via cultural studies, Raymond Williams, E. P. Thompson, uh, Michel Foucault, Mac Robbie's defense of looseness must be considered here. And in this context, okay, and in this context, the issues of uh, academic specialization, reification, political economy, biological determinism, literary criticism, psychoanalysis, and so on. Okay, I mean these these specialization and, and uh, these specialized fields. Okay. And, and generation of narrow concepts tend to lose hold on the holism or totality of lived experiences. Okay. Now, then, then in these two lectures broadly, okay, 
we have discussed the feminist challenge to uh, the critical modernist paradigm in sociology through the lenses of holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. In the lecture to follow, in the next lecture, we will discuss as a part of deconstruction of modernity okay, through the works of cultural studies. Who are the major thinkers in cultural studies in this, um, I mean for the time being? Okay, e. P. Thompson, Raymond Williams and Michel Foucault. Michel Foucault will discuss a little because we are, I am trying to keep Michel Foucault for the section on postmodernism, postmodernist, postmodernist, postmodernist's response to critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay, in 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 cultural studies, uh, I mean uh, cultural studies response to uh, or cultural studies challenge to critical modernism is very important. We'll discuss it in the next lecture. Thank you.